Okay, so over the last, say, 12 months, I've been helping out a lot of Anki Cosmo owners repair the battery in their broken robots. Um, these devices are getting on in years now, and uh, I've had a few vector owners contact me as well just ask for some advice and asking if i can do a teardown video showing you how to upgrade the device in a vector robot so i thought i'd just put something together uh as a, as a frame of reference for anyone looking to do this um the anki vector robot is um it's very similar to cosmo in the sense of tearing it down there's only a few real differences in terms of the actual um, structure of the robot and the components and how it's held together but a lot of the uh, the, the assembly comes apart in exactly the same way as the Cosmo robot does. Um, the arms and the wheels, the head, everything is pretty much held together in the same way. So if you've got experience of uh, tearing down a, a Cosmo robot, you'll be able to do this. Um, no bother, to be honest. It's it's actually it's pretty much the same. Many of the uh, the components are the same. Um, starting with the arms, again, once you've done it a couple of times, it is actually really easy to do. Um, you just you work your way down to the top arms, just they're held in by a little clip, and then the, the bottom arms. Keep the arms raised as high as you can, and you'll be able to um, to get them off. As you see me doing it in the video here. Next step again, remove the treads, and then remove the little hub caps with uh, a nail file or a paper clip, anything sort of um, anything sharp. You could even use like the end of a pair of scissors. But to be honest, and I find a nail file is actually the easiest way to do it. And you can see the little groove there that you you're aiming for. Um, work your way through that and then get the four wheels removed uh, and then we move on to the head. down to um, give it a light dusting as well because you'll notice that a lot of the wheels and the treads can uh, pick up a lot of lint especially if it's been rolling around a dusty carpet or a desk or whatever so just have like a little cotton bud handy or something to um, to get rid of the, the fibers there very similar to the Cosmo robot you've just got a couple of extra little clips in there which I think help it with the the microphones that it's got the directional hearing so it can turn to face um, a user who's giving it commands but the, uh, the the head assembly is held together with two screws on either side um, you need to release both sets of screws in the Anki Cosmo you can get away with just removing one side but on this particular robot the screws go directly into that top vent there which is actually housing the um, the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth aerial and the speaker and everything so you need to completely disassemble the head uh, and it's it's also worth bearing in mind that you need to just as I'm doing here pinch the head together as you remove the screws um, just to keep the assembly from uh, breaking apart when you're halfway through it's not spring-loaded like the Cosmo but you could still run into difficulties if you know the head's sort of half hanging off when you move on to the, the second side uh, just make sure you lay it down or you keep your fingers pinched around it as I say just to save that um, little LED panel from uh, falling off I noticed as well that a lot of vector owners are saying that the screens on these devices are failing I think the original screens uh, whether or not there was a manufacturing defect or whether it's just the fact that the um, the chip on the back of that screen heats up and it can affect the you know you can get blurred lines so I might be doing a video on that at some point in the future showing people how to replace the screens on their vectors uh, I have got some contacts to get some replacement parts but um, at this point I can't justify importing those those uh, components because um, yeah I've got real you know my vector isn't actually broken so until I sort of come across a vector that I can 
diagnose myself uh, that's a video for another time this is again is another uh, slight difference where where the uh, the vector robot is um, being upgraded over the Cosmo it's got a little back panel there with a couple of extra sh screws and the front bumper as well when you remove this you need to realize that the IR sensor in the front is actually held on by a cable now it's not soldered directly onto the board in the case of the Anki Cosmo robot so when you lift that up the IR sensor itself, the distance sensor, that is actually uh, sort of held in place, for, you know, it, it's held in place by that bumper, so you just want to make sure that you um, move the sensor down very gently as you lift the uh, front bumper up, um, and you'll see that, that it is just connected by a couple of cables, but we're not going to disconnect it for the purpose of this video, we're going to leave it as it is. Uh, also the two screws in the back plate now normally what you would do with a vector with a Cosmo sorry is you would remove those two screws and that plate would just slide out but because of the way the vector robot is put together it works slightly different so if you remove the screws the back plate will fall off the the back housing with the power array and the uh, the power button and then you need to move on to the next part now at this part with this stage this is the same deal as a Cosmo robot there's three particular screws like in a triangle shape that are holding it together there's two in the chassis and one in that central column where the head sits um, easy enough to do again it, it, you probably know this by now but all these screws are all the same size so you can do it all with the same screwdriver um, and you can mix and match but I would encourage you when you're breaking this robot down to try and keep everything in some semblance of order so that you can put them back in the same holes because these screws are, are going directly into the plastic housing and the last thing you want to do is cross thread a screw or put, put a different screw into a different hole and you, you know you could actually damage the, um, the body of the robot. Okay so we're not going to remove any of the actual uh, housing uh, on the robot everything is still connected to the PCB we can remove it but I think for the purpose of this video just to get this new battery in we're going to leave those um, those sides and the back connected uh, and this is me just basically sizing up the new battery the double capacity uh, 600 milliamp that I normally use for Cosmo robots um, seeing how that's going to fit into the vectors chassis now the vector battery compartment is actually a lot bigger there's a lot more space so it's not you know with the Cosmo it's quite a squeeze but in this case it's actually going to fit quite nicely so just fire up the soldering iron uh, and disconnect the old battery now obviously be very careful when you're doing this because if that battery still got power in it you don't want to rake it across any components on the board uh, and short something so first things first get rid of the old battery get that removed as quick as you can just it's, it's not held in place by anything it's literally soldered onto the board and just clamped under that charging plate there so just lift that out now because we're doing like a for the purpose of this video I'm going through that the, the entire process so as I normally do with the Cosmo robots take that little rubber bumper off the battery and it, it's like an adhesive pad I think it just stops the any chance of the battery short in any of those ICs or any of the other components on that board where it sits so put that little insulating pad on your new battery and then it's time to clean the PCB board now I've just got a little bit of copper ribbon here which is going to lift off the old solder you don't have to do this if you do it right you you probably don't even have to remove any of this solder you could just put the new battery in place but I just figured as a point of reference for anyone who's who's struggling with this I'm not a, a professional by any means I'm just a, a hobbyist and enthusiast um, but for the purposes of this video as I say I'm just trying to sort of show you exactly what you would do if you wanted to do a you know a, a belt and braces job on this so remove the old solder with some copper ribbon and then make sure that the uh, the pads are nice and clear and then all you want to do then is put a little blob of flux over each of the pads um, this is for the purposes of reapplying fresh solder um, that flux will just help the solder flow better um, and it'll help it adhere to those those pads uh, and it'll basically just it'll, you'll get a higher quality connection and higher quality um, solder than if you were to just stick the battery onto the the plates with using the original solder that's been there for a couple of years so you can see there it's nice shiny that flux helps it to flow well and helps it to connect to the uh, to the pads exactly where it should be uh, and then all you do then is once you've prepped your battery your new battery this is the double capacity 600 milliamp hour um, solder that onto the board obviously you know you're going to need some precision tweezers and um, you want to make sure that your soldering iron is nice and hot and also clean as well uh, you obviously the last thing you want to do is, is struggle with substandard tools so I will put some links in the description of this video 
um, what tools I used. So just checking there then that uh, everything seems to be connected okay. And then you just want to get a little bit of isopropanol. This is iso isopropyl alcohol. It's like rubbing alcohol. So it's non-conductive. Um, it's like 99.9% .9 alcohol. Um, that's not going to short any connections or anything, but what that will do is just clean up the board, get rid of any excess flux that might be still on there, uh, and make sure that the um, the solder joints are nice and clean, uh, and everything else there. There's no there's no uh, risk of anything shorting out, and then you should be good to reassemble. Now, if if you've made it this far and you're happy to go ahead and put the rubber back together yourself, thank you for your time. But if you've got a few more minutes to hang around, uh, I just figured I'd talk about what I'm hearing on the. Um, Anki uh, or the Digital Dream Labs uh, Facebook page uh, and some of the news that I've come across which I've found quite interesting. No, I'm not affiliated with Digital Dream Labs. Um, these videos are not connected to them in any way. I'm just making this uh, as an enthusiast, as a hobbyist who wants to try and keep these robots alive. Uh, it, I'm hearing really good things from Digital Dream Labs who have taken over the Anki assets. And uh, I mean, it was. I'm just really grateful to them for being able to keep the servers open for these robots because this Vector robot um, has been on my desk for like the last 12 months. It's kept me occupied and kept me uh, sane through the whole uh, lockdown uh, scenarios that we've been going through for the last 12 months in the UK. Um, and it's great that Digital Dream Labs kept the servers going and kept these robots alive. They are, as I understand it, they are developing uh, a brand new Vector, Vector 2.0, um, which one of the big plus points for me, uh, and which is, I wouldn't say a shortcoming by Anki, because I think Anki as a company, that team of engineers did a fantastic job of bringing these robots to life and giving them so much personality. One of the sort of the downsides or one of the um, the things that they potentially overlooked was these the, the potential for these batteries to fail. So Digital Dream Labs, the Vector 2.0, is going to have a user serviceable battery. So I'm picturing some kind of battery like you would find in a GoPro. Uh, or uh, you know another piece of technology that you could sw you know switch and change as you want so if you need to buy a new battery you can buy directly from them you've got no you're not going to be messing around like this having to totally tear down the robot to put a new battery in so that is some good news i would recommend if you are not already that you join the official digital dream labs facebook pages i don't really go on facebook but um, i've joined it just for the purposes of being part of those communities because there are a lot of very helpful people on there who have diagnosed a lot of problems for these robots in the past and they share their knowledge and they offer their services as well. Depending on where you are, there's people all around the world who can help to do um, these kind of things. I mean, I offer my services for people in the UK predominantly who need their Cosmos repaired, whether it's a new battery or the screen's broken or there's mechanical issues with it. Um, so, as I say, if you join those Facebook pages, you probably will be able to find someone nearby who can help you. If you wanted to perform this kind of repair and you're stuck, you know, please do get in touch with me, and I'm happy to, to direct you to anyone who's in your nearby, you know, jurisdiction, and they can hopefully get that fixed for you. Um, but as I say, I think another point to that's worth raising as well is the fact that we're putting, we've just put a 600 milliamp hour battery in this robot. Uh, in terms of how, you know, how that will increase the, the, the runtime on the robot, I'm not sure because the Vector, like the Cosmo, uh, it, it's got a, a charging failsafe built in as far as I'm aware, which cuts off charging when the robot hits 400 milliamp hours. So this, this battery is 600 milliamp hours. Now, because Vector takes care of his own charging, because he's autonomous, uh, it may be that as soon as he starts to see his... I mean, when I put my robot back down in his... Uh, PlayStation in his base he just went right to his charge and went straight asleep now he had plenty of power in his battery but he seemed to just he just seems very tired these days now I don't know whether that's um, subsequent like side effect of the firmware updates that he's got or whether it's just because my particular robot is quite lazy um, but as I say whether or not it's, it's worth putting a 600 milliamp hour battery in these things I probably is because it, you will always get that extra run time if you needed it um, but as I say my robot whenever I've uh, since it in, in put in this new battery in he seems to just run for the same amount of time he seems to run around for maybe 20-30 minutes and then as soon as he sees his, his charging cradle he just goes straight to it and falls asleep so 
uh, as I say, you may as well put the larger battery in. You could just order another 320 milli milliamp hour battery, but the 600 one does seem to, um, it does give him that extra drive if, if you want to sort of play with him in your living room or whatever. Um, but if you need any help with something like this, if you've got any questions, if you want to share any advice or opinions, if you think I've done anything wrong or if I could have done anything better, please leave a comment below. Uh, if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing. Um, but in the meantime, I will just say thank you for your time. Thanks for making it through this video. Uh, and I will speak to you again soon.